Patagonia is a region of unmatched beauty located on the southern tip of South America, encompassing parts of both Argentina and Chile. In this video, we're going to show you some of the best places to visit and stick around to the end for some itineraries and other travel tips. So let's go explore Patagonia. Cerro Campanario is a spectacular viewpoint located just outside of Bariloche in Argentina's Lake District. You can hike to the top or catch a chairlift, but no matter how you get there, you'll be rewarded with one of the best viewpoints in the world. From the summit, you'll have 360 degree views of Lago Narwhal Wapi and the many islands that dot the lake. And if it couldn't get any better, it is all framed by snowy peaks. This viewpoint was also named one of the eight best viewpoints in the world according to National Geographic. Huekewe National Park is a place you may never have heard of and have a harder time trying to pronounce, but this place is a must visit when in Chile's Lake District. Located just 33 kilometers from Pucon, this beautiful national park boasts many spectacular trails with sparkling emerald lakes, snowy peaks, and home to the unique monkey puzzle tree that looks like something from Jurassic Park. Laguna de los Tres sits at the foot of the iconic Mount Fitzroy that you'll recognize as the logo of the Patagonia Clothing Company. This amazing place is accessed by Sendero Fitzroy, a 20 km out and back trail starting from El Chalten. This is one of the most beautiful and popular trails in Argentina and for good reason, as the sight of this beautiful lake and the iconic Mount Fitzroy is an experience you'll never forget. Tierra del Fuego National Park is located near Ushuaia in Argentina. The park is located next to the Beagle Channel and was Argentina's first shoreline national park. There are many trails there for you to explore that take you along the dramatic Patagonian shoreline or even high up into the mountains for a bird's eye view of the Beagle Channel. So if you don't fancy hiking, there is also the end of the world train that takes you through the park or you could visit the end of the world post office where you can get your passport stamped or send a postcard from the end of the world. The Perito Moreno Glacier is located about 78 kilometers from El Calafate in Argentina, located inside of the Los Glaciares National Park. The size and beauty of this glacier is unbelievable. It is 250 square kilometers in size, 30 kilometers long, and 179 meters thick. So you can take a boat tour to go out and see the glacier or you can walk on the many trails that give you a look at the glacier from every angle where you come face to face with its crackling icy walls. It's truly a beautiful spot. And if you're lucky, you'll get to see the glacier carving where massive chunks of ice will break off and crash into the turquoise waters. Salto del Claro is a spectacular waterfall located about 7 kilometers outside of Pucon in Chile's Lake District. It's a bit of a mission to get there and it's not well marked, but if you manage to find it, you'll be rewarded with an epic 90 meter waterfall that is surrounded by lush vegetation. So this is one of our favorite waterfalls that we have ever visited and we think it is a hidden gem. The Beagle Channel is located on the very southern tip of South America, creating a natural border between Argentina and Chile. The Beagle Channel is about 240 kilometers long and 5 kilometers wide at its narrowest point. The channel separates the main island of Tierra del Fuego with a bunch of smaller islands. 
The best way to see it is by jumping on a cruise from Ushuaia and along the journey you'll stop to see the end of the world lighthouse and loads of wildlife including sea lions and a large colony of penguins. In between the stops you can sit back and enjoy the views of the Patagonian coast and the mountains that surround it. Patagonia isn't all sparkling emerald lakes and snowy mountains, it's also home to a wide variety of wildlife including over 150 species of birds and the best place to see these feathered friends is at Laguna Nimes near El Calafate. Here there is a small loop trail around a wetland with some bird hides where you can see pink flamingos as well as many other species that frequent the area. Torres del Paine National Park is located in the southern Patagonian region of Chile near the city of Puerto Natales. The park boasts some of the most spectacular natural beauty in the world. Most people access the park via the popular W and O treks. These multi-day treks take you to the park's most spectacular locations including Glacier Grey, the French Valley and Torres del Paine where the park gets its name. You can also do day trips and visit all these places and many other spectacular locations. And if it wasn't already on your bucket list, I'm sure you're about to put it on there right now. Alright, so now we've got some itineraries for you. So these aren't set in stone, so you can mix and match, change locations around, change orders around, do whatever you want. These are just rough guides on itineraries that you could do when going to Patagonia. So the first itinerary is one week. So if you're going for one week, we would recommend that you focus on one location and just explore that for the four or five days that you're there. So I'd either go to Pucon, Bariloche, El Chalten, Torres del Paine or Ushuaia. So choose one of those, spend four or five days exploring the area, going on all the hikes, seeing all the sites, enjoying some local food before going back home. All right, so for a two week itinerary, we would start in Buenos Aires where you would catch a plane down to El Calafate and then jump on a bus to El Chalten, spend a couple of days there, do some hikes in the area, then jump on another bus back to El Calafate, go visit the Perito Moreno Glacier while you're there before jumping on even another bus down to Puerto Natales and from there we will visit Torres del Paine National Park where you can do the O or W trek and once you're finished there jump on a bus back to El Calafate and then from there I would fly back to Buenos Aires and if you still got time spend a couple of days soaking it up in Buenos Aires before heading home. All right, so the final itinerary I'm gonna go through is the one month plus itinerary. This is the big granddaddy of all Patagonia trips. So what we would recommend, land in Santiago de Chile, spend a couple of days there, enjoy the capital of Chile, and then jump on a bus to Pucon. Spend a few days in Pucon, go to Weiweike National Park, go see that hidden gem waterfall, and then jump on another bus to go to Bariloche. So spend another few days here enjoying the Narwhal Wapi National Park, walking along the side of the lake, eating the local chocolate. And then you've got a choice. If you've got the money, take a flight to El Calafate. If you're brave enough, take the 24 hour bus to El Shelten. Let's just pretend we've taken a bus. We're brave. So take that bus to El Shelten. Spend a few days there. Hike up to Mount Fitzroy, Laguna de los Tres, go to Laguna Torre, drink a craft beer if you want, and then jump on the bus that's about four or five hours to El Calafate, and from there you can see the stunning Perito Moreno Glacier. If you have another day, you can go to Laguna Nimes and do a little bit of bird watching. 
So after that, you can take the bus to Puerto Natales, which is a bit of a pain. You have to do a border crossing and all this sort of stuff. Now we're going to do the W Trek or the O Trek. You've planned all this in advance. You've watched our video, so you know all about it already. You have it sorted. So you're going to do the W Trek or the O Trek, whichever one you fancy. And then after that, we can then take another bus down to Ushuaia, spend a few days in Ushuaia, go for a cruise on the Beagle Channel, check out the Tierra del Fuego National Park. And then from there, you can take a flight back up to Buenos Aires, soak in the vibrant atmosphere of Buenos Aires for a couple of days, and then go back to wherever you came from. That is the final and ultimate Patagonia travel itinerary. To get around Patagonia, you basically have three transport options, and that's buses, flights, or hire a car. Unless you plan to hire a car, you'll most likely use a combination of bus and flights. You will mostly be using buses to get around, and these can be booked in person from the bus stations, or you can book online in advance from the BusBud website. There is accommodation available for all budgets from basic to baller so you can decide based on your own budget and preferences. One thing to keep in mind though, during the peak season you will need to book months in advance so you can snag your accommodation, otherwise you'll pay a ridiculous amount for the last room in town. The best time to go is between December and February, but this is also the busiest and most expensive. So you should also consider going in the shoulder seasons between September and November and March and May. But expect a few days of bad weather if you do this. All right, so now we have some bonus travel tips for you. So the bus journeys can be really long, so bring some snacks and water along with you. So the bus will stop at some gas stations or petrol stations, depending on where you're from, where you can get off, go to the toilet and buy some food and snacks and stuff. But it's better to come prepared and have some snacks when you want them. So make sure you bring clothing for all weather conditions. Even if you're going in summer, the weather can turn on its head in an instant. So bring warm layers as well as a rain shell. A lot of these beautiful places require you to hike 10 plus kilometers to see them. So before you leave, do a little bit of fitness work. Your legs will thank you. And the last thing you want to happen is to be laid out for a few days after a hike and miss out on other activities. Make sure that you plan and book ahead, especially during peak season to ensure you snag all your first choice accommodation and transport options. And the last thing is be ready for the adventure of a lifetime. This is one of the most beautiful places on earth. So slow down, take it all in and enjoy it. And if you do go, let us know in the comments how you get on. We'd really love to know how was your Patagonian adventure. Also, if you're looking for more information on any of these beautiful places in the video, we have a Patagonia playlist. Go check it out. We'll see you there.